does not set out to be a leader, but becomes one by the quality of his actions and the integrity of his intent. Art, in the simple words of Michael Jordan, you earn your leadership every day. A leader by the actions can inspire, motivate, and encourage their team to do and become more. But what type of leader do you aspire to be? And how do you get to that leadership role? The Professional Development Committee is pleased to host this session to discuss just that. Welcome to Leadership 101. Our facilitators are excited to share their wealth of knowledge with the hope that by the end of this meeting, you feel confident about your roles, professional and our with Rotary, our Rotary app, and that you leave with clarity on how to pursue or enhance your leadership role. Without further ado, I ask P.E. Daniel to introduce our first facilitator. Good evening, everybody. As you know, I'm P.E. Daniel, and I am so happy to introduce a lady that I am definitely going to be working closely with next year. So who is Tracy Knight Lloyd? Tracy is a marketer by trade, autism advocate by choice, and a customer centric with, passion, with a passion. She is a mother of one very special teenage son, Ade, whom the world characterizes as autistic, but she describes as simply awesome. In serving above self, Tracy is an active member of the Rotary Club of Barbados and will assume the role of president of the club in 2022 to 2023. During her tenure, Tracy will be focusing on addressing the needs of vulnerable women in Barbados. In 2015, at 40 years old, Tracy became one of the youngest vice presidents within the Saja Corps group. Her role at Saja Corps General is wide and varied, and she leads a team of 32 to excellence in the process improvement, business intelligence, customer experience, call center, and sales management. A former journalist, Tracy has over 16 years experience in the financial services industry and over 20 years of marketing and customer experience. Tracy loves a good time, a good laugh, and a good meal, preferably one she has not had to prepare herself. Please join me in welcoming P.E. Tracy Knight Lloyd. Good evening, good evening. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, P. Danielle, for that introduction. And thank you, Secretary Janelle, for inviting me this evening to all of the Rotaractors and guests on this call. Hi, Blair. Um, thank you for the welcome. So today I'm going to do Leadership 101. Um, just leadership as I know it, what I've experienced. Um, I first went into leadership hi i first went into leadership at 30 i became a manager at 30 years old um so that was my first foray into formal leadership but obviously growing up i would always been an informal leader um you know the clique leader prefect that kind of thing the organizer um when i went to mona i was the block deputy block rep that kind of thing. So I've always been in leadership positions, but formally um, started in leadership at 30 years old. So everybody can hear me okay and see me all right? Okay, good. I've got a fan going. It's kind of noisy. Can you hear it? No? Okay, good. Okay, so I, I, I like young people's slang. So, you know, I say leadership, you're born ready, you stay ready. I like that kind of thing. I hope I use it in the right context you know it is but um you're born ready you stay ready for leadership so what is a leader um and i have the definition up and a leader is basically anyone who takes responsibility for finding the potential in people and processes and who has the courage to develop that potential and that is what i truly believe a leader is a leader is not about titles it's not about i'm the vice president of this i'm the manager of this it's not about the company car. It's not about the corner office. It's not about the benefits, the perks. All of those are all of those are tied in, but that's not what it really is. It really is about developing people um, and uncovering their potential and helping them to grow. Um, 
some people may not want you to stretch their potential though i must warn you though you may see potential in people and they may not want to stretch to it you will encounter that but definitely you look at processes every unit or managerial or task you encounter as a leader it is up to you to find the best way to execute that and to find the best people to execute that and to ensure that people can give up their best in executing that task um, you lead through your teams so it really is about developing people taking them along um, and you know you don't you shine when your teams do well so it, it, it's not a place of me, 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 I, 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 I. You really take the time to invest in your team and eventually you shine because they, they perform and you shine. So it's like a, a default place. So that's what I see leadership as. It's different to their managers and their leaders. They're people who are managers, but they're not leaders. They have the title, but are they developing people? Are they helping people to grow? Are they invested in their team's development? No. So I call them managers. I don't call them leaders. A leader is totally different. Okay, next slide. So one of the key things, and I would have talked about this already, but I, I have to fly, flog it again, is emotional intelligence. You have to be able to recognize your own emotions, people's emotions, and how to discriminate between feelings. If you did not think emotional intelligence was important, I'm sure that two years into a pandemic, you must know that you have to be self-aware and you also have to be able to be aware of other people's emotions. Emotional intelligence is critical normally in leadership. Right now it is like 20 times even more important now with the pandemic. Um, so what are the key components you can adjust? What are the key components of emotional intelligence? That's on the other slide. You have self-awareness and self-regulation, empathy, internal motivation, and social skills. And the one that I, I really focus a lot on would be self-awareness and self-regulation. Um, I tell this story all the time about, and it, about being emotionally intelligent and being self-aware. Um, I, I remember I went into the office. I was really worried about Adi. He had a birthday coming up. You know, you're worried about his development and so forth. And I was in a really bad place. And I still went to work. I was self-aware aware enough to know that I'm in a bad mood. So I, sh I, lo I shut my office door, which is not something I typically do. Very quiet, very little interaction with my team. And you would think, well, I'm in my office keeping my bad mood to myself. No because I was, I was out of character. And I remember people peeping in at the door like, you all right? I was like, yeah, I good. You know, real flat. And my team member in an uproar. And I, and I threw off the entire team's day just by being cranky, simple as that. I would ruin productivity, affected somebody else's mood, just lower the morale of my team because I was not able to regulate myself and snap out of it and be the person that I normally am. I went to work in a place where I, I didn't regulate. I was aware, but I didn't regulate. And how I knew that I had really hit a, 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 a real bad place is at the end of the day, one of my team members came and she said, so Tracy, are you feeling overwhelmed? And I was like, oh, again, a pep talk, which is good because it showed that, okay, they care and, and they know that um this is not normal but i should have been able to control and regulate my emotions to a point that it didn't spill over into the team and that's one of the things that you have to do as a leader you have to know what your triggers are you have to know am i reacting if somebody um if i'm having a, a discussion or a, a disagreement or so with a team member what are my triggers if she says something like you're too bossy does that does that trigger you and, and lead you down uh, the rabbit hole of how you respond. Um, are you responding from a good place? Um, empathy, empathy is critical now because so many people are coping with this pandemic in different ways. And some people are just not coping at all. So you have to be empathetic, especially now as, as a leader. What drives you, your internal motivation? Um, you know, as a leader, you typically have to be a self-starter, you have to, get up and be able to go you have 
goals, you have targets, you have dreams, you need to self actualize. So you must have something in you that says, this is what kickstarts me. You must know what your way is. You know, a, a lot of people have ambitions and so forth as their way. I tell people, my way is simple. My way is my son. It's simple as that, you know, um, in terms of my professional life. In terms of social skills, social skills are critical. You have to be able to talk to your team members. I remember I was doing a one-on-one -on -one and I had a team member. She would come to work and she would be upset. With, she would be upset and she would not speak to her team members for the entire day. And, you know, that was something that we started to work through with her. But she had a one-on-one -on -one with me and she asked me, well, do you think that I would be good for a supervisory role? I'm thinking, I was like, okay, Tracy get your diplomacy in order and try to respond decently to this question. Because if you don't talk to your teammates, your colleagues, how am I gonna make you a supervisor when you have to talk to your team members? So those are the kind of things that you must be aware of, your social skills, how you interact. You know, don't be doing the Beijing thing, but you put on enough weight, you know, <laughs> you get fat though, I mean, that's those you have to be mindful. Those are the kind of things that make people uncomfortable in an environment, you know. And, and yeah, and plus it's none of your business, really. So those are the things that you really have to be on. Know yourself, understand yourself, and be in tune as well to other people's emotions. What may trigger? You may find people in an organization and they may have been told, um, oh, they're not good at technology. So you know that when you approach that team member you and there is a new technological change you know how you have to go through it with that team member so that they can be comfortable and come out on the other side it really is about tailoring your leadership style to suit individuals and how they respond but first and foremost before you can do that you have to know yourself and that's basically emotional intelligence and that is critical i know some of you may work for people who are not emotionally intelligent that's okay but you you work on your stuff okay you work on your stuff. Uh, so you position, how do you position yourself for leadership? And this is one of those times where I say, fake it till you make it. I want to take off this. Y'all can see these? Sorry. This is one of those times where I say, you should fake it till you make it. Um, you have to look and act the part of a leader. Um, you know, things are changing. Luckily for your generation, these things are not that important but I dressed like an executive before I was one, right? Um, the, I believe that stuff is going out the door, everybody's just casual and that doesn't matter. But back in the day, I dressed like an executive before I was one. I carried myself a certain way. Um, how I, my demeanor, I looked at, especially as a woman, I looked at how the other female executives operated in terms of you know, structuring meetings, how they, how they led their teams, that kind of thing. And I took examples from the good ones. Um, so fake it till you make it really is about making sure that you position yourself that when somebody looks at you, at least they can think, oh yeah, this person can, can, can run this show, that kind of thing. But the most important one that I want to focus on is self-leadership. If you, you have to own your work, you have to be responsible. You, you know, you cannot entrust, I would not entrust um, a leadership position to someone who can't even lead themselves. So you know you have a deadline. You know that you have something to deliver at two o'clock. You believe that you may not make it. Do not wait until two o'clock to be saying, I can't make that deadline. You manage the situation early. You say, okay, I'm not going to make it. Or, or ideally you should make it, but if you can't make it, it's like, I'm not going to make it. This is when I'm going to be able to deliver. And if you say you're going to deliver at three, hit that deadline at 2.30. Or if, you, if you're if you not making two, hit it at 2.10. You know, you have to manage the situation, but don't wait until the deadline has passed or you haven't made it to say it. I can't submit it or I'm not getting it done. Wherever possible, you must plan your work and be aware of what is required of you. So you have to perform in your role before persons can entrust you to oversee other people to perform in their roles. And I think that's one of the things that, that folks need to be mindful of. Are you excelling where you are? Are you shining? 
Are you just hitting it all? That's the kind of thing that you need to do. Self-leadership. Are you managing your timeline? Or are you going to your boss with a lot of excuses? Oh, I didn't do this because um, my glasses broke. Or I mean, those kind of things. But things that you can manage. Are you managing yourself well? So those are the kind of things that need to you need to take um, into consideration as you start to position yourself for leadership. Next slide. Yes, yes, yes. Go tell it on the mountain. Tell it on the mountain and everywhere. I know that we come from a society in the Caribbean that has this notion that you shouldn't push up yourself. And I'm telling you that I've learned the lesson the hardware way. Push up yourself. Tell it on the mountain. Say, speak it into being. If you want to be a supervisor, tell somebody, say something. Don't sit down. I mean, tell somebody that can help you get there. Right? Don't sit down and say, oh, they can't see me over here working real hard. They can't see I'm leadership material. Can't they see? Can't they see? Can't they see? Can't they see I want to be a vice president? Can't they tell I want to be a partner? Can they tell I want to be an MD? Say it. And I know that it's in our whole Caribbean culture, it's sometimes, well, maybe with millennials, you guys are different, but let your career plans be known. Let, let your HR know, let your leadership know that I want to be considered for leadership roles within the organization. I see myself going further than this. And if there's a succession plan in, plan in place, you know, you make sure you're a part of that. And in speaking to, to where you want to, to go, you get good feedback, you get um, coaching on how to get there in most responsible organizations. But speak up and say, you know, this is where I see myself in five years in this organization or not, <laughs> you know, and this is where I want to go. And I find that a lot of us, we don't say, we sit back and we think, oh, I'm working really well. They should recognize and they should know that I'm management material, I'm leadership material. Say it. Don't be afraid. Speak it out loud. Let people know these are your ambitions. Next slide. Stretch yourself. Um, when I was a junior at Stagic Corps, <laughs> They always wanted like a junior representative on certain committees. And I used to be like, oh, why do I have to do this? I, you know, I'm like, this, this is what all these meetings are holding me back from my work. But I got, I was on a uniform committee. I was on a job evaluation committee. Um, and what I learned, I learned a lot about business. I learned a lot about pe people's personalities. I was exposed to high level um, members of the team, decision-making, the job evaluation helped me in terms of how people perform and how people are, are rewarded for their, their, their skills. Um, what are the skills in the organization that give greater impact? And so you get to learn more about the organization. You get, you acquire different analytical skills. So if there is a committee happening, if there's a project happening and you can get on it, if you're assigned to it and it's outside of your, your job function, that's okay. You need the skills, take the skills, expose yourself as much as possible to other skills and other areas outside the organization, but you still have to balance your day to day. I mean, there's, there's gonna be a state, you're going to be stages in your career where you're going to be flat out and you're going to just have to work really hard because you're building, you're building your capacity, you're building your CV. Um, and trust me, it'll pay off. But there, there, you know, there's things where you have to go through that learning curve so that you can really come out and, and know all the things that you need to be to enhance your leadership position. So if there are opportunities that work for you to get on projects, a technical project, you know. Sometimes people rope you into stuff and you're like, I really don't want to be on that. But be careful, don't go on a project that isn't going anywhere, I'm saying, or watch your time. But definitely, if you can get involved in some company-wide projects, committees, new challenges outside of your role, that also helps enhance your leadership abilities. Next. I have a friend who says he's a solutionist. And I know that's not a real word. 
but he says all the time, I'm a solutionist. And this is one of the things that I look for in leadership. Do not be that person that runs to the boss and says, we have a problem. This is the problem. This is the problem. This is not going well. La, 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 la. Okay, reframe that narrative. This is what I think we should do about X, Y, and Z. This is where we need to address this. This is how we fix this. So I would always say, you know, nobody likes a whiner and a pranger. Um, people in leadership looking for folks that can see solutions and not see a problem for every solution, but who can see solutions for problems. And this is another um, example of something that I learned. I remember I was 20, I was, I was like 28. Yeah, I was 28 um, or 29, 29. Because I was, I remember being pregnant and I had a senior exec say to me, um, I don't see any leadership skills in you. And that devastated me. Right. I remember we were overseas in Miami. I remember we were, I was filming a commercial and we were filming it in Miami. I remember going back to the hotel room and just throwing myself across the bed and bawling. And all I'm thinking is, oh, I can be a leader having a baby. I can support a baby for the rest of my life on this salary. Right. And, but it was a good turning point for me because I started to examine how I was behaving. And I realized that one key thing that I've been doing is that I was, when I go into her and I talk to her, I would say, well, we have a problem and I don't know how to do this budget time. You know, I would go to her with those things. And at that level, that's not what she was looking for. She was looking for somebody that came in and said, this is, this is the issue. These are the solutions and giving her options. And then she weigh in as a, as a leader with more expertise to say, yes, Tracy, that is the way you should be going. So I had to start to look at how I was taking responsibility for the tasks that I had, how I was getting things through to completion. The other thing that I did, and I'll talk about that later, is I started to open up my eyes. I went and I bought a whole ton of books to read about leadership and what I needed to do um, to get there. So that was something that helped. So I always say that that was a, it was a good turning point. And um, that, and I went on to become a leader about, about twice in that same organization. But I had to get that hard pull facts um, um, said to me at that stage because I needed to, I needed to, I needed to boss up. I really did. And that, that helped me at that time. So think about how you are approaching your leaders. Think about your mindset in the organization. Um, and sometimes all of your ideas will not be, will not be accepted. Sometimes you may have solutions that you can see clear as day, but your boss may not see it or other people may not see it. Um, I remember as well, I wrote a proposal about an, an initiative that I wanted to implement in the company. And I wrote that proposal every year. I wrote that proposal for three years. And you know, life happens. The first year I was told we can't afford it. So I went, I did more research to show how we could, we could not not afford to do it. Then the second year it was we are on two different platforms. So I wrote a proposal how we could operate on two different platforms. So by then I, when I wrote it the third year, we were on one platform, so I didn't have to knock that off. And I also had a new boss who had just come in and was fresh from the outside. And he's like, okay, write some more of the business case and let's do this. And I was, I was looking at the reports the other day and that solution is generating like half a million a month for the company. So I was glad that I kept at it. I mean, you, you keep get you may get knocked down, but like I said, I wrote that every year, like an annual thing. I'll say, I am not giving up on this thing. And the beautiful thing about it is in year one, and when I look back at it, 
my year one plan was was you know it had like a few pages by year two the ammunition you need to get this thing through you build it up by year three i believe my proposal was solid because i was like just fighting down all the obstacles and everything that could come up as to why we shouldn't do it um and it was good for me because it helped me to grow and, and helped me to be able to see how i can sell my ideas in the organization so i laugh and i say it took me three years to get it through but i got it through so that's why I'm saying don't give up on your ideas. If you have ideas, put them forward. If you have um, solutions, put them forward in a respectful manner. I don't expect you to say to your boss, no, you are doing foolishness. That is foolishness. You don't know what you're doing. I expect you to say to your leaders, I looked at it and in my estimation, perhaps this is how we can do this X, Y, Z to secure this, right? So that's some of the, the solutions. And, you know, it goes without saying that as long as you are in Rotary, you are a leader. So I don't really, there's nobody on this call or that I believe should doubt that, they ask, that their, their leadership aspirations are, are not legitimate. I believe that every Rotarian and Rotaracta is a leader. You join the club, you participate in activities, you're on your committees, you're leading. You chose to do something above yourself, service above self. You chose to give back to the community. That's leadership. So I'm not even going to debate whether this team is, you know, your leaders. It's, it's, your people of action are leaders. Simple. I, I, there's no need to debate that. The other thing that I find that is a great place to hone your leadership skills, serving on the committee, serving on the boards, it really gives you a great opportunity and it's great networking. I learned a lot um, from older leaders in Rotary and it doesn't always come in a formal setting. Sometimes we're sitting down at lunch and I say X, Y, Z and they're like, well, this is how you should go about this or this is what happened in the business world. You may be planning a fundraiser and it's like this is how this contract is structured these are the these are the issues that we should look out for simple things like that you, you learn you learn how to you know you, you just learn so much and it helps your leadership it helps your capability and your expertise um i didn't join rotary to get ahead um to get a promotion or whatever but I can tell you that a lot of the skills I've learned in Wall Street, dealing with people, how to lead, um, knowing things that happen business-wise, it has enriched my leadership skills and my position at work, okay? Not to mention to have that, having that added dimension to your life really is, is, is fantastic. So goes without saying, you're a Rotary Rotaract, you're leaders. Just make it happen, guys. It's just a matter of time. Don't even let anybody tell you you're not. So you just are, so you just focus and get your plan going. Strategic and collaborative. One of my favorite quotes, um, and I'm, I, it's my favorite quote, but I don't remember it by heart, but that's okay. It's one of my favorite quotes. It's, it's by Winston Churchill. It says, you cannot um, make it to your destination if you stop and throw stones at every dog that barks. There are a lot of things that happen in organizations, a lot of skirmishes, a lot of little issues, um, a lot of things that may come up. Be strategic about what you spend your energy on and what you get involved with. Make sure that you are focused on what you need to deliver and that that is at your forefront of your mind. The other aspect is also on the other side is to be collaborative. So you have to be that person that everybody knows, well, not everybody knows, but that people can turn to and you can work well with other people. That's critical to leadership. You know, you have to be able to collaborate and have the goodwill of the organization at heart, you know? So those are some of the things that you have to look at, strategic and collaborative, okay? Next slide. The other thing is don't stick your head in the sand. You know, some people come in and their head's down and they're just working, 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 working. Look up, 
ask, go and ask your, your boss for feedback. You know, sometimes in this culture, I remember I, I read this somewhere and I went and I asked my boss for feedback and she said, well, I ain't hear nothing bad. It was, <laughs> I ain't hear nothing bad. So I guess you do it okay, right? But don't just stop there. Look for people that you work with to give you constructive feedback. Obviously, you choose people that you trust and people who's, who's, who will give you um, material or information that you can really grow with. So don't sit down there and think, okay, I'm really working very well and I'm doing everything perfectly and you're not. You may, you may also not realize that you may be coming across as defensive in certain meetings that other people may, may pick up on that, but they may not say anything to you, but you ask and then you look and see, well, where's the value in that statement? But definitely, definitely in terms of getting feedback, that's critical. And you don't wait for your formal appraisal. Check in with your boss um, ever so often. How am I doing? What am I, what, you know, what are the areas that you want me to improve on? Just ask a question so that it can, you know, you can grow and get ready for that leadership role. Right? Qualifications. I mean, it goes without saying. Sometimes we were sitting and I guess you guys in the accounting firms would know, you know, you need to have to qualify to be able to um, operate at a certain level. Um, some jobs are less focused on qualifications than others. Some some leadership roles, you do need your certifications in certain areas. So make sure that you know what is required. Um, don't think that because, you know, I put in the work and so forth. If a certification is required, go out there and get and go after it. You know, it can only help, right? Thanks, Mike. Uh, mentors, sponsors, and career coaches. Some, everybody doesn't have all of these, but you should have at least one of these. This, a sponsor is someone in the organization who will speak about you when you're not in the room. The sponsor is a person that will say, well, Danielle is a good fit for this role. Or the sponsor is a person that will say, well, Janelle is a good fit for this role. Um, your mentor now is somebody that you can go to and, they, and you would hear something like, okay, well, Kareem, um, you brought the situation to me. This is what I would do if I were in that situation and guide you on certain things. Your mentor, you can have lots of different mentors for different things. Um, you may have a mentor who is good at helping you speak up for yourself, a mentor who's good at navigating difficult scenarios, a mentor who may be HR focused, who may be able to help you um, through performance management issues, that kind of thing. And then you have a career coach, someone that you actually pay to help you build up your skills and to build up your, your toolkit. Um, the career coaches kind of, if you're like all over the place and you don't really know well where I'm heading to help you do an analysis of your skills and to help you refine what your direction should be or could be um, based on what you bring to the table. So I would say that definitely um, any one of these or any three of these, um, all three of these if you can. And the beautiful thing is that you can find at least mentors in, in Rotary as well, in your Rotary clubs and your Rotary clubs. You know, people who, who, have, who have excelled and you want to emulate, you can ask them um, to be your mentor on certain topics or so forth. Right? Next slide. Brag. Brag, brag, brag. I know that this is difficult. I know that, especially women, we don't like, yeah, the brag book, you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I'm still not doing good on mine, but I, I'm doing a little better on the bragging. And it isn't, oh, to know bragging, you know, West Indian seems to think is showing off. It really isn't. You have to be able to speak confidently about your accomplishments. So if you're going to say, you know, last year, my team made 4.2 million and that was about 75% of the company's income. And the team did a tremendous job in achieving that. You have to make sure you slide in these things, and slip in these things. And, you, you know, you, you remind people that I am here working my, working hard. And this is what I bring to the table. 
this is what it is. I close this deal. I finished this project on time with days to spare. The client was really happy about my performance. You know, you asked me for X and I gave you X, Y, and Z, which helped you in that meeting and with that negotiation. I was the agent of the week for six times. You know, those are the kind of things that you need to weave into the conversation and make sure that you document. Kareem spoke about the bright book, write it down, write it down, write down your wins personally and professionally. It's good to look back and it, is, it comes top of mind. And especially if you're going to be interviewing, you have those things in that bright book that you, you can spew off to your interviewers. Yes, I know you guys want me, but did you know how fantastic I am? Let me tell you, I did X, Y, Z. You know, it's like West Indian people just don't, we don't want to speak up. And I realize how cultural, what a, a society, societal um, issue that was. A couple, a couple um, weeks, months ago, my mother had to do a sermon. And she did it um, online. So I watched it on Facebook. Um, so I said to my mom, I said, mom, the sermon was good. She said, um, you think so? I was like, yeah, you didn't think so? Well, I don't like to have to say things. You know, I, I prefer for other people to say about me. I was like, mommy, no, nobody does that anymore. And that old vision thing about self-praise and the praise that is just throw that out, throw that away. Be sure to have a forum that you can articulate your accomplishments, that you can speak about them, that you can make it known. It is so important. And that is one of the mistakes that I made throughout my career. And I did not document. It's only when I, I would do a project, finish it, and move on. I'd be like, it's only when I look back, I was like, yeah, I do that for true. You know, I, yeah, I did that last week. Or sometimes somebody would come up and I'd be like, yeah, I did that a couple of years ago and this, these were the results. But, you know, somebody came at the end of the day with the idea that I had done three years ago. And when I look through my archives, I can't find any evidence of it, but I know it's a program that we have done, but I can't find the project plan or anything. You know, I just did it and moved on. But... It was already something that I had already done and achieved. So I'm just saying to make sure that you document your achievements and your accomplishments. Every single thing, every single thing that makes you feel good and you know that that was an accomplishment for you, document it. Don't be saying, oh, that ain't really a big thing. It is a big thing if it's a big thing. All right? Yeah, moving on. Read. I don't have time to read a lot of books. Um, and I read, I read widely, um, but I read, these are the things that I can keep up with. McKinsey, Forbes, LinkedIn, a lot of good articles, Fortune, Harvard Business Review. For women, I read Valerie Burton. In terms of um, women in leadership, I find that she's a good author. I read um, Jen Sincero, You're a Badass, quite like that. Um, the Little Black Book of Success. Um, I read those things. Um, quite a bit of reading you have to do. The old school guys like Jim, Pol um, Jim Collins and those guys, you can read those as well. But just get your hand on as many leadership books as you possibly can so that you can, um, you know, really bolster your strength and your skills and learn from um, some other folks, right? But these guys always have short articles, relevant, and stuff that you can digest quickly. All right, and then um, do as I say, but not as I do as it relates to social media. Don't look at my social media profile. My website needs updated. I don't even have a current picture of myself up on, on um, as my corporate picture. So this is the case where I say, do as I do as I say, not as I do. I enjoy having fun on Instagram. I don't really post anything about work, but I know I should do better. But guys. Make sure you manage your social media profiles in terms of your career, LinkedIn and so forth. If you want to write articles, if you want to make sure that you push out what your accomplishments are, if you get company awards, post them. If you get promoted, you know, post them. Make sure your LinkedIn profile is updated with all your skills, um, all of the um, up-to-date 
job positions you've had, um, that kind of thing. So don't do as I do, but do as I say, please. Just make sure your social media profile is up to scratch. And I, I do, not that I take it into consideration, but I, I do, I am curious about people that I'm about to interview and I do Google people and look, I do. Um, it's not something that you take in, I try not to take into consideration, but I'm very curious sometimes. Um, and I do look, I do look. I mean, I'm not going to judge you if you have a, a swimsuit or anything like that because I'm fairly liberal, but there are other people who may not. But definitely, I look at LinkedIn and see, you know, what you've done, what you've written, you know, that kind of thing. So, and then, of course, on LinkedIn, you can open your page to recruiters and uh, that works. You'll be surprised at how your profile works. And I have been um, approached by recruiters not even locally, but in England, based on my LinkedIn profile. So, so saying, get your page up to scratch, okay? And um, so all of that is what you do to prepare. So you've landed the job. So getting the leadership role is like taking 11 plus. A big fanfare, a big fanfare, but you still have way more to go. So I just wanted to let you know the news flashes that the party has now started. And guess what? You have to continue doing all of that stuff that I just outlined. Don't think that you have arrived. You still have to continue working on all those things for yourself, as well as leading people. Fun place, isn't it? Right. Thought so. Your first, first task should be if you take on a new leadership role, is you should create a 100-day plan. What do I plan to do in the next 100 days? And there's a lot of templates for this on the internet. There's um, a lot of books on how to do it. Uh, I'm looking for the book I had on the first 30 day, 90 day plan, but a lot of leaders will tell you. And sometimes people ask you this in interviews, you know, what are you going to do in your first 100 days? So you got to make sure that you keep doing all of the other factors that I've mentioned prior, as well as managing your teams. Next slide. Make sure your rules, your expectations, and your key performance indicators are crystal clear. Sometimes people take up roles and jobs, and they're not sure exactly what they should be doing. So they run off, and they think they're spending a lot of time um, moving this or, or building this this, this um processes process when the, the leadership is really looking at over here um and another thing i must add stay strategic one of the things that happened to me as a young leader um, when i first i was a marketing manager 30 years old you know because i could do all the functions in the marketing role i found myself actually doing some of the work as opposed to setting the strategy and leading so you get bogged down in the details because you can do it. But what you really need to do is to ensure that you are working through your people to do this and that you can still see the big picture. So that's another thing that happens when people are promoted as well to their area, that they may still be a little too technical and too tactical, sorry, too tactical as opposed to being strategic. If you know what your deliverables are, your strategic deliverables, stay focused on them and make sure that they're clear. So you don't want that when your review comes out, your probation comes to end, that you get a bad probation or you may not even retain a job because you were not working for, you're not working at, at what the organization were. Okay, next. Your people are your first and only priority at this stage. Get to know your people. Sit down and have one-on-ones with them. Find out how they view the organization, they view their role, they view the department, what they like, what they don't like, how they like to be led. Sit down and have one-on-ones with people. You'll be surprised how, how much information that garners. And then also it will help you build the social skills. You might find out that somebody is into gluten-free foods, and you can say, well, you know, Supercenter, Big B, ILA, it has the best ones. Those kind of things are where you can connect with your team, but you really have to start building your rapport. So I would say that one of the first things to do is to don't have one-on-one, -on -one. let them know what, um, you know, what you are like, how you lead, 
if you have an open door policy and so forth and you, you know you build a rapport from there but definitely talk to your people get to know them okay you know, slide. so there's no bull in the china shop business i always say when you the first thing you do is i say lol but it's not really lol is listen, observe, and learn. Ask a lot of questions, take notes, no judgment in the early days. Do not go, as you said, the leader and skin at your face, like they are still doing that. They're still using Excel spreadsheet. Oh my goodness. You know, that kind of thing. Ask questions, find out why. Reserve judgment until you are ready to execute your plan. Do not march in there like a bull in a china shop. Say, no, nah, this got changed. That got changed. I want to try. No, they're doing very foolish. Just say, hey, can't. No, no, no. People will pull the rug from under you. And I remember, you, and also institutional knowledge. You are young, you are qualified, and you are talented. You may very well have to lead people who are way older than you are old enough to be your parents. That is a reality that can happen. That has happened to me, right? I remember when I first started, I had one team member. You know, I had one team member, and now I have 32, but I have one team member. And I remember saying, oh my goodness. I remember talking to my dad, and I was like, dad, I have one team member. How am I going to get all this done? And he said to me, one team member? So he said, how long has she been there? I said, about 15, 20 years, he said. That's institutional knowledge. Use that. And that was so critical because there are certain assumptions that I made that I would see things and I'd be like, on the surface, that, that don't make sense. But some, but having her there to say, well, this is done so because of that and that and that, it helped me work backward to see, well, okay, this is where this process is and how I need to address it. So be very, I'm not saying that you're not going to make changes, but be very careful how you rush in there and act like I am, I have arrived. This place is a mess. I'm going to turn this place over. Don't do that in your first leadership role. It will gain you, it will alienate you, and you will not be as effective as you need to be. Okay, so I say no bull in China shop business. Next slide. You need to develop a transition plan. How are you moving the department to what you want it to be? What your leadership plan is going to look like? Your transition plan, I call it. Your 90-day plan, 100-day plan, how, however you're going to do it. So how do you plan to lead the team? Are you going to be someone who, who has frequent one-on-ones? Communication is critical. You've got to make sure that you talk to team members, sprints. Um, I do sprints, so I do like, 20 minute meetings every week one-on-one -on -one with my team needs sometimes it isn't 20 minutes based on what we have to do and when things get really hectic we may not have it at all but definitely touch base with your team communication is important emails don't solve everything so make sure that you have those avenues to talk to people um what are the changes that you you believe that you should make if if any at all are the enhancements that you need to make in the department and I would say be transparent as possible with these changes. Discuss all around, up, down, across your boss, your colleagues, your team. You try to discuss them as much as possible, where possible, because every change you may not be able to ventilate. But those that can be ventilated, make sure you have as much information as possible to make those decisions and that you can get the buy-in and the collaboration as, as, as much as possible. Sometimes that's the best way to, to gain buy-in to make sure that people are aware and that they also believe that they have a, 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 a stake in what's happening by you securing their feedback. And identify your quick wins. So they still need to show the folks that, you know, I'm in this leadership role and I know what I'm doing. Identify the quick wins. As um, a lady at work always says, pick those low hanging fruit and action them quickly. Turn around things that you can. And that kind of builds momentum and people see things start happening, but definitely, have a plan, have a vision about how you're going to get things moving in your area in the, those first um, 100 days. Next slide. And review, review, constantly review what you've been doing. Um, 
it's part of the whole brand book as well. Make sure that you constantly look at what you've been doing. How can you tweak it? How can you do better? How can you move it to the next level? Next slide. And my final slide is really what I don't tell you in the books and what people really don't talk about um, sometimes, what I call the nitty gritty. And ladies, you don't have to give 100%, you have to give 150%. And I know that that could be controversial, but the reality is that women do have to give that extra um. You will hear things like, oh, a man, he has some gaps. He has some gaps in his knowledge he needs to work on. A woman, she ain't know what she's doing. So it is different and you really have to um, push yourself to that level. I believe that with your generation, things will change and we'll be on equal footing. But for right now, women, you really have to step up and step up and step up. Imposter syndrome. Sometimes when you're promoted young to leadership, you think, well, do I really, do I really belong here? I really, I really deserve this job. My friend applied for it, but she has more qualifications than I do. Maybe it's, it's she should get it. Um, I'm making more money than my friends. Should I, should I even be here? You need to really deal with that. You apply for the position or you were promoted to the position, just execute. Believe in yourself you can do the work and deliver. Don't let those niggling thoughts take over. And if you have people in your life who are saying those things, remove them. Um, the reality is when you get promoted to leadership, there will be people in your life and in your organization that will not want you to do well. Do not, I'm not sugarcoating it. There will be people that will not want you to do well. I guess y'all call them behaviors. But they will be out. And what you will do is strike in their face. You will not take on that negative energy. You will know who are the people who will tell you the deadline is 2 o'clock when you really know, when they really know it is 12. Because that existing organization, don't fool yourself. There is always somebody who is just not on the up and up. See them, be clear, you know, make sure that you are, are really aware of what's going on not and but but still i always say it's still take everything with good intent because you may know i know that you're not i know that you're not doing what's in best for me but i am not going to respond in that manner to you i will always try to take the high road you're still human and you may have a little slip up but you always try to take the high road so there will be people who will do things like that? I remember a couple of years ago in another place, I took over a department that somebody else had been running. And every time I said something, oh, that was always like, that, that is so bad. And, blah, blah, blah. and then one day I said, um, so, you know, what I would like to do is X, Y, Z, but perhaps if you told me what you did and it didn't work, what didn't work when you were running the area, um, then I would know not to make that mistake. And, you know, the person didn't have anything to say, but even if they had something to say, I would have taken that as constructive feedback as a way to, you know, to get them involved um, in, the, in the whole discussion and to really have a collaborative environment. So I'm just saying that there will, you will get opposition and don't, let's not pretend it doesn't exist, but definitely be mindful of it and gossiping you know there are a lot of this is this is real there are a lot of leaders who who gossip about their teams i do not care who had a baby who well, no not who had a baby sorry i don't care who going out with who or who got you, i don't want to know your integrity i do not want to know what baby sorry but you, you don't come to me to my office to talk about your co-workers i don't encourage that that is not that is not my rule. If a coworker, if if a team member is having an issue, fine, and they approach me, then make sure that I guide them to the right um, EAP or whatever. But definitely, I'm not going to be talking. So you have to watch the gossip. The other thing that you have to be mindful of: your relationship with your peers may change. You may all be on one level, 
and then you may get promoted and your peers are still there. You're going to hear that she get all funny, that she's a leader, you know, she get all funny. It depends on what type of peers you have, she get all funny. But you will not be able to, you have to be mindful. You're in a role now where you may know confidential information. You may be dealing with information that everybody isn't isn't supposed to know you may be aware of why certain decisions are being made so when there's that lunchroom talk about oh god did you see what he did you have to be mindful of how you participate in those conversations if at all because you are now in a position of leadership and you're part of the team so you're not going to be wanting to say yeah you could believe that them say that we can close that to have a talk but for real i feel like we should open at all so i don't know why they went long I, the, we say to open but i don't feel that we shouldn't do that you if you've made a decision as part of a management team you stick with it you don't come on and say well then do this or whatever that's not it so your relationship with your parents may change um you you will have to to there are certain discussions that you won't be able to have because of the rules that you that you have and so you need to be mindful of that the other thing that i want to end off by saying throwing people under the bus is not necessary for promotion you know there are people who will say things like you know they come out to know and say it, but you know set up people so that people can see that person isn't performing I am, I am going to tell you that when someone is not performing, their leaders know and their leader's leader know. It's whether they want to make do something about it or not, it's up to them. It's not for you to make yourself look better by making them look bad. I'm not saying that if they do something that impacts on your ability to deliver that you don't call it out or address it. But don't do that deflecting thing where people always, you know, saying, but so-and-so hasn't done this and da-da-da. The time you take to engage in that, you could be spending time enhancing your skills and moving yourself forward. Um, so I would say throwing other people on the bus, under the bus doesn't get you promoted, at least not in my book. Um, so those are these, some of the things that you don't really see um, written in books, but this, these are the things that really happen in, in the Caribbean atmosphere. And I just thought that I would share that and um, be upfront and honest about these things because you will also need to know how to navigate your leadership journey. So I've said quite a bit, hope it made sense to you, but it's a, just a reflection of everything that I've gone through and what I've learned. We learn from our experiences. Yes, reading is good, but you learn from your experiences and you must open your eyes and understand when you go through things, why things happen as the way that they should and how you can learn from it. So basically, that's how my leadership journey has evolved. So I'm more than willing now to take any questions that you may have. You can ask me anything related to the presentation. Yes. Thank you so much, PE Tracy. That was certainly enlightening. I personally saw hello. Um, but you had your, your hand on my neck a little bit with certain things. But um, we can talk about that separately. It's better your hand. It's better my hand on your neck than my foot in your neck. So it's true. <laughs> I'll make sure it grab a look. Uh, I just want to recognize Rotarian Davina Lane, who is here with us. Thank you for joining us, Davina. And um, yeah, so the floor is open for questions. If anybody has anything they want to ask Tracy, she is ready and willing. So go right ahead. All right, good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, Tracy. Hi. So I'm going to get the ball rolling, ask a question. Um, this one hit home personally. Um, so I'd like to ask, as a leader, what can I do to develop emotional intelligence? Um, personally, I don't have a job where emotional intelligence matters, but leaders who are good at it 
usually are more successful than others. It, it, is, it matters in everything. <clears throat> it matters in everything. Um, emotional intelligence affects whether you're going to take on the road rage lady, somebody that pissing you off in the street, somebody that cussing you off, you know, you know, don't, don't be like me and lose it and forget and say, oh, shoot, that could be a customer. You can't have road rage dressing. <laughs> so it, it, it matters of everything. But I would say the first step is um, tracking how you feel, how, certain, how you respond to certain things, right? So how, how do you feel when somebody says X, Y, Z? How does it make you feel? How do people respond to things that you say? So emotional intelligence matters for everything in life. It, it, it matters in club, for sure. Um, definitely when you're in a volunteer um, position where you don't have to, where you can't say to people, you must do this. Um, so I would say that the first thing is to pay attention to your own feelings, your own, what triggers you, what does not trigger you, what makes you feel good, how do you feel um, engaged, how do you feel empowered, how do you feel motivated, so that you can develop your own level of self-awareness and then also start to tune into how you impact on people. So I would say that's the first thing. And of course, there's Daniel Goldman. He writes a lot on emotional intelligence, so you could just grab some of his books or follow him on LinkedIn and um, or anybody on YouTube, just plug it in and you can start working through it. But you definitely have to be very, it's, it's really about self-aware and how to and connecting with people, meeting people where they are, and understanding that everybody's different and everybody reacts and responds to things differently. And then you have to adjust your leadership style to, 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 to respond to those persons and how, they, how, they, how, how their behaviors are. Right. So I hope that's been helpful. It's really All right. awesome. Thank you, Stephen. We actually have a question from Deandra. So Deandra, you can go ahead. Hi, good night to all of those I did not speak to. I don't have a question per se. However, just wanted to say I really did enjoy the presentation. And one thing that really hit home for me is self-praise ain't no praise. I always believed in self-praise ain't no praise, <laughs> you know? But I think after hearing and you sharing the experience with you and your mom tonight, I think I actually just threw that into the garbage, you know? And I'm actually going to pick up the brag book. <laughs> yeah, because I, I remember, I recall times I would be venting with a close friend or colleague about something. And she'd always say, but you don't remember when and you know, two weeks ago and three weeks ago, and I always tell her, I am so thankful for you because you you remind me of these things that I have, you know. But I think I need to take accountability and start doing it myself. Yeah, yeah, I think Thanks. so. <laughs> because you know, God forbid your colleague leaves the job, you don't have anybody to remind you. Okay, yes, I'm really, I'm not good at it. Um, myself, my coaches who actually, my career coaches who told me about it. And when I meet with her on Friday, she'll kick my butt for not doing it. So I got between today and Friday to really get some stuff in. Um, uh, but definitely, when I look back, it helps you see about what it really boosts your self confidence when you're, you know, if you're feeling down. And it's a good way to really say, mm, this is what I'm capable of. This is what I have done. And, you know, I, I can, I can more, I'm more than ready to go to that next level. Definitely. And don't just write them down, speak, you know, slip it in in a meeting. Yes, yes, yes. And I was so happy that, you know, my team, we did X, Y, Z, and da, da, da. So, you know, just slide them in. And especially as women, we don't like to do that. You know, we have this thing like people can sit down and see that we're working our butts to the ground and, you know, speak out, speak out. Definitely will. I feel like Deandra and I should start a support group because it's at that stage that I felt like Tracy had to grab a look. Um, <laughs> one of our members, Danielle, has asked, um, she would love to hear your thoughts on balancing mental health while going through that stretch yourself period you mentioned. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna get um, 
um, personal, I'll share. Um, I have a child with autism. I'm a single mom. And I have, I have a, a like I said, I lead a team of 32. And um, I have all that on my plate. And I've never been afraid to seek therapy when I have been in um, positions where I was, I felt very overwhelmed. Um, my organization provides counseling as well, take advantage of that, but definitely in terms of having somebody objective to talk to, um, that's critical. When you are also going through that stretch period, where you're taking on more, you have to you have to know what relaxes you, and you should you should actually you should actually write down what you like to do, what what revitalizes you, um, and try to work it into your day or your week. You know, whether you like to watch TV as a wind down, uh, whether you like to soak in your towel, whether you like to watch jam bean videos. I ain't shame. Between Jam Bean and it was Jam Bean. Yeah, it was Jam Bean and mostly Jam Bean. She helped me make it through the pandemic. So shout out to Jam Bean wherever she is. I ain't shame. I watch her. Um, so those kind of things, you gotta make sure you fight. I always say you gotta fight for it. And when you're going through the stretch to understand that on the other side is development, is achievement, is accomplishment. You have to make sure that the stretch is leading to somewhere, that you're very strategic about it, that you're what the skill that you're building, it ends up on your CV. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes, yes, yes. Make sure that you are very um, focused on that. A group of supportive friends, that helps. Um, party friends, that helps too. Um, you know, I think that you just have, you have to fight for yourself. You have to balance it. You can't just be working, 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 and stretching, 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 and not have fun or have some downtime, family time. You have to make, you have to make time is a fight because you have to be balanced. And as a leader, you must have an outlet. You can't just be working, you must have an outlet so that you can cope with the demands. And the stretch is also a time that will, prepare you for the ultimate leadership role. So you know what you need to do to, to bring down your stress or to, you know, to manage yourself, but definitely take all of those things into consideration. Therapy, if you need it, a good social network. Um, and just, you know, being in tune to what you need. So if you need to take a day, take a day. If you, you know, if you want to drink coffee, drink a coffee. If you want to read a book, read a book. You want to watch Jam Bean and skin your teeth? Watch Jam Bean and skin your teeth. Whatever gets you, whatever gets you back to that place. Okay. I see some things in the chat. Yes, and I think this will be our last question from Zahir. Um, how do you keep yourself grounded and maintain being empathetic as a leader? I wanted to, I was going to, I was going to say the Beijing thing, but I wouldn't do that. Because I, I, how do you keep yourself? Because I don't know, you keep yourself grounded because you know that you're, you're a person, you're normal. You, you weren't always where you were. You know where you came from. Um, you eat and sleep and other things that everybody else. Um, I also think that it helps to have your overall mission. Like I said, for me, it's not, I, it's not about, I enjoy driving, you know, a company car, I enjoy driving the benefits, but what really makes me feel good is to know that I lead a team of, of, of people to their best potential. I have been able to produce over the years, several employees of the year, um, contributors of the year, persons who have moved on, from supervisory to management to assistant vice president. Um, I can look across the organization and see the people, team members who may have started in my department who've gone on to other areas to excel. 
and they say things like one thing I learned from working with Tracy and you know and those are the things you know I never have a problem recruiting people from my area um so that's that's the stuff that I take and to know that when you when you come to work with me you are going to be developed and you're going to grow you're going to learn new things even though some people are not happy about that but you're going to be able to say well this is what I did with Tracy and I got credit for my work she didn't say Tracy did this she said Charmaine did this or Gemma did this or you know I as the old people say I push up my people where there's opportunity for them to present on a project they present I may open the I may open the button so to speak but you could believe that my team needs are going to do two or three of the slides so that other managers can also see their potential and their capacity and help them to grow so I stay grounded because I'm normal I stay grounded because I'm human I stay grounded because I know that I am still learning as a leader I don't feel that I have a right um you know, I'm still learning. I still have room to go. I have places to go. And I'm humbled by the fact that, you know, I'm grateful for where I am, but I, 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 don't, I don't assume these errors and graces. I, I really don't have that energy. I don't. Thank you so much, Tracy. That was an amazing session. I'm sure we all very much enjoyed it. I will be harassing you in short order. Uh, but I want to turn over to our assistant director, Keisha Springer. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Thank you uh, Danielle. I want to thank all the attendees and participants for their questions just now to our first panelists. And now I have the pleasure of introducing to you one of our very own DRR Mario Boyce. Mario joined the Rotary Club of Barbados in 2016. He held several positions such as Vice President, President, Immediate Past President, and most recently, Membership Committee Chair. Mario represented the club and country throughout the region at district events such as Royla, DLT, and the Joint District Rotary Rotaract Conference. Mario has raised the club's profile regionally and internationally through dedication, passion, and sound leadership. For his passion and dedication, he was awarded with Rap of the Year in 2016 to 2017, and he was also selected to be the co-chair for the local railer during the 2018 World Road Rap Week. Join me in welcoming DRR Mario. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Kitty Keisha. Good evening, everyone. So I want to thank PE Tracy. Um, you would have touched on a ton of stuff that I actually want to talk about. And you can see the interconnectivity in the leadership presentations. So I'm just going to jump right into it. So this evening, I'm going to talk about leadership in Rotaract. Every club needs good and sound leadership to ensure its proper functioning and ability to serve its community and its membership. Without good leadership and a good direction, we would not do what we charge those road actors. We would not develop each other. We would not help the communities around us. We would not serve properly. So we need good and sound leadership to help guide us as best as possible. Next slide, please. Now, this is something I firmly believe with every fiber of my being. I'm sure a lot of people have heard me say that second line before on the screen many, many times. All true Rotaractors are leaders. When I say this, what I mean is persons who come into Rotaract and don't take full advantage of the program or don't immerse themselves as much as possible do not turn out to be as good of a leader as they could possibly be. When you come in and you dedicate yourself to the program and you dedicate yourself to development and helping the community around you, you become a true Rotaractor and a great leader. You stand out within every part of your network and every facet of your being. So I want you guys to say no to being a rhino. And a rhino is a rotor actor in name only. Again, I repeat that. A rhino is a rotor actor in name only. And if you come in your rhino, you will only get what you put in. You cannot get returns on anything that you don't put in. Um, I have a friend who is a bank manager and she can tell you for sure, if you don't invest, you cannot then draw down 
or debit the account. Next slide, please. So the Roadmap Program creates and develops leaders. We can go back one. Oh, sorry, great, sorry, sorry. Thank you. The Roadmap Program creates and develops leaders. The program is designed to enhance skills to create leaders by utilizing or highlighting and affording the ability to exercise or improve, one, your social skills through club service, Two, your knowledge and experience through professional development. Look at this session here. You sure learned a hell of a lot just now from PE Tracy. Three, your emotional intelligence, which PE Tracy talked a ton about just now, through community service by going out there and experiencing different aspects of the community and putting yourself in their shoes. You get to develop your empathetic muscle. <laughs> no, that's not really a term, but that's why I call it. You learn empathy, you learn how to increase your emotional intelligence by working side by side with other actors and helping the community around you. And four, your internationalism through international service. It gives you a world view and a different view on problems and solutions. It helps you to think bigger than just who you are here in Little Barbados. We are 166 square miles and we are one part of District 730, which is 17 countries and territories, which is one part of Rotary Zone 33, 34. So you can see how small a part of it we are, how bigger we need to think to increase our service and increase our leadership skills and ability. Now I pointed out four key areas here. I would like you, somebody, anybody, to tell me some of the other areas in your ROTRAP program that you can develop. Each arm of service you develop under, but there are different things you can develop from different arms of service and multiple things under one arm of service. Finance, knowing how to beg people, and uh, how to budget. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Anybody else? I would say generally, um, you learn like project management skills, effective communication, and delegation. I feel like you were looking at my entire screen. <laughs> um, those are some of the key ones and the major ones that I would have developed myself. Um, anybody else want to take a stop? There are tons of them. There's no wrong answer. It's all about your experience and what you've developed and learned. All right. So I think that's it for that part of it. Next slide, please. So like many organizations and workplaces, where Rock has cultural leaders and we have appointed, elected or appointed leaders. So what I mean by this is that the cultural leaders of our organization are usually those long-term members who are always there to assist, guide, mentor, without presently or even ever holding an official title of leadership, such as president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, director, or any other officially elected or appointed position. I'm sure all of the primaries here can point to some cultural leader within our club and relate to what I'm saying. On the other side, we have the elected or the appointed leaders who are the president, the vice president, the secretary, the treasurer, the directors. Um, you have your assistant directors, your committee secretaries. Those are your elected or appointed leaders. So both of these types of leaders have a wealth of knowledge and experience and are usually sought their guidance due to their open and inviting and pleasant demeanor. And you can see within the Rotara, within Rotara and other volunteer organi organizations, sorry, where this is extremely important because people are coming to give up their time and we need persons who have the temperament, the emotional intelligence to then guide them as best as possible and motivate them along the way. Next slide. So, we're gonna go a little bit more into the detail of leadership development within the program. And on this slide here, you can see it says, to fully develop your leadership abilities through the Roadmap program, you must fully commit. Commit to showing up, commit to helping, commit to Roadmap. I can talk about my personal experience and how I have grown tremendously from where I started at in 2016 when I first came on club to where I've grown to in 2022 not just in title, 
through our program of personal experience, through job experience, etc. One of the key things I can give an example of is when I was first at MQI and was selling cars, and I joined the robot program, it gave me the ability to develop myself and work with project management and finance and fundraising and look at my professional life and how I could move up. Then it afforded me the opportunity by using those skills I learned to interact within the workplace to be then promoted to the assistant manager for after sales admin. So you can see where the development is gonna come in very handy. Next. So, anybody notices anything familiar about this slide and what's on this, quick, this slide? Anybody can tell me about the 90-10 rule? It's not the 80-20? Uh, no, actually from Hitch, he uses the 90-10 rule. So in Hitch, what he described is the 90-10 rule where you show the significant other, the, one of your dreams or whoever, 90% that you are into them and leave it to them to come the other 10%. And this actually resonates so much with the road rap program and the road rap clubs. Because the club provides 90% of the opportunities on many occasions for you as members to participate in projects, initiatives, training for development as road rap through and to fill in community needs. The 10% consists of you stepping forward and taking full advantage of the opportunities and resources that are extended to you as a guest, a prospective, a member of this great organization. Next slide. So one of the biggest resources that we have at our fingertips is my rotary. My rotary is a wealth of knowledge. First and foremost, that is Rotary's brag book and historical education page. They teach you so much about Rotary, its accomplishments, its guidelines, everything is on there. And then you just feel proud, I, at least I feel proud whenever I go through and I look at some of the projects, the service history, some of the testimonials from all across the world. I feel proud and I feel inspired and I learn a ton of stuff just by going on this website. So I know in Cranberry Crash course, you guys would have been told to sign up for my Rotary. Some of you probably never look back, but this is a major resource. According to DJ Khaled, this is a major key in helping you develop as a Rotary actor and a leader. So on my Rotary, there's something called the Learning Center and the Learning Center has developmental programs, um, training sessions, you name it on some of everything. On the slide here, you can see some of them. Um, they teach you about Rotary, they teach you about club leadership, district leadership, general things about Rotary, the membership types, and all things about membership. And my favorite part of it is professional development. Um, within the last two years, Rotary would have partnered with Toastmasters and helped to create programs to teach persons about public speaking. And I benefited a lot from those training sessions because before that, I would be nervous and I'd be speaking extremely fast on this presentation. You're probably going to understand me. I'd be sweating. And then at the end of it, I'd be wondering, did I even pass on any information? Did I effectively communicate as a leader? And this is just one of those things that I'm going to implore you guys. Take advantage of using 9010 rule here. Rotary and Rotary has put it here for you. That's their 90. Your 10 is just log on to a training session. Some of them last 30 minutes, some of them last 45 minutes, some last as short as 15 minutes. Some of them are just videos, some of them are PowerPoints. And you learn a plethora of information and you can grow. But it's one thing to say you are learning, you're training, you're improving your knowledge, your skill set. But then what happens after that? Next slide. After that, the next thing for you to do is to utilize the training by putting it into practice. Sign up for that community service activity. Volunteer to lead that program session. Sign up to ask people for money for project finances, sponsorship, partnership, you name it. Put all of that knowledge you've just gotten into practice. Something as simple as signing up. So even though a pro dev session here in Rotaract 
that is putting that all that knowledge into practice and developing your leadership ability. And you will not regret it, trust me. Something else you can do is utilize your network. Your network is your net worth, and I cannot stress this enough. Your network is your net worth. So when you're surrounded by good people and you learn from them, you grow with them, you are developing immensely. And as we're directors and Rotarians, we do that by the people that are funded by us and giving of our time for service with them. You can maximize the use of your network in Rotary and Rotaract, finding a peer mentor. Find someone your age, someone in Rotaract with you that may have a little more experience or even is on the same level as you, has a different perspective, who can push you, who can help you to grow and develop those latent abilities that you have, who can remind you, hey, we have Breaking Bread Assist um, next weekend, and that's something you can come up to. You can help with your emotional intelligence. Or, hey, we have um, the for the booth session next weekend, and that's going to help set you up on LinkedIn, Facebook, social media, et cetera, with a professional photo. These things are, are very important. And then for a Rotary mentor like P.E. Tracy, and you have P.G. David, you have Rotarian Neil, you have a ton of Rotarians at your disposal who can help you navigate the Rotary and Rotary experience and grow as a leader and just develop further and further along the lines. Next slide, please. I just want to circle back to what I said about being a Reno. After you've done all the training, you've found a mentor, you've experienced everything, you've grown your knowledge base, actively participate. Put all of it into action. If you don't use it, you will lose it. And I'm going to repeat this. If you don't use all of the training, the knowledge you've just gained by visiting a Rotary Learning Center, you're having a peer mentor or a Rotary mentor, you will lose that knowledge. You will not develop as far as you can within the Rotary program. Put that, to the, put that to use to the best of your ability. Step forward by using all of the programs, all of the initiatives and projects that the club has, and just get out there and be the best that you can be. We need everyone to step forward and then keep the club thriving and become the leaders of tomorrow for the club. But speaking of all, the experience, the next step, and the future, let's talk about moving on to Rotary with our big brothers and sisters. After you've completed the Rotary program, you've done all the training, you've had all the knowledge, the experience, you've actively participated and stepped up and led by example. What's the next step? Next slide, please. The next step after you've completed the Rotary program, you've built up that solid foundation and you are ready. Nobody can tell you when you're ready. That's why Rotary removed the upper age limit in the Rotary program. When you are ready, you determine that. The next step for you is to graduate into Rotary with our big brothers and sisters like P, Tracy, and all the others I mentioned before. How can we do that? That's actually quite simple. By being an effective leader within Rotary Act, by actively participating, by stepping up and just being who you are and serving and serving proudly, you become known to Rotarians within your community, within your immediate network. You may even become known to Rotarians across the district. What is then going to happen is you're just going to be able to, when you reach that age, reach out to a Rotarian and say, hey, I'm ready to move on to Rotary and I think I want to join this club. Usually what happens is they're going to walk you through their membership requirements and see where you line up and what you've done so far and see how they can best move you on into the Rotary Club. I think it usually takes between three to six months as a general member. What I've seen tremendously in the last few years, especially in District 7030, Rotary actors who've served and served well, who led their clubs and developed as much as they can in the program, have easily walked through the door. The first example I've seen of this was back in 2019, I think it was. Former Rotary actor Alicia Simmons, she was a Rotary actor up until June 30th, 2019. And then, sorry, June 30th, 2018, I think it was, or 19, I can't remember. And then July 1st, the very next day, 
next month, next rotary year, she was pinned as a Rotarian because of her outstanding leadership within the Rotary program, her development, and her commitment to the program. And that's some of the things that we can do. Other things that happen within the Rotary program as well, when you're looking to graduate onto Rotary, sometimes they just think that you need to, well, not they think, we all think that you need to develop a little more and you go through the membership process to get indoctrinated into the culture of the Rotary Club that you're going into and prepare you for a great Rotary experience. And then after that, you become a Rotarian and your service like just expands exponentially. You have access to projects on a whole different scale. You have access to projects and service on an international level and an impactful level. So that is so extremely humbling. And that's it. Any questions for me? Oh, I think it was very clear in the presentation. Awesome. Hi, Mario. Um, Hi. Thank you for that session. Um, we're actually opening the floor to question and answers now. Um, anyone has anything you'd like to ask? You can go ahead, raise your hand, or drop in the chat. And if no one has one us yet, I'd like to start. Um, how do you find you get to balance your to act? Um, your career and your personal life, being a, a leader in Rotary. Um, when I find out, I'll let you know. But no, honestly, um, it's actually a very hard task because I'm very passionate about Rotary, and I will definitely take every opportunity I can to serve. Balancing that with my personal goals is kind of easy because it's helped me develop and see what I truly want to achieve in life. Then balancing it professionally is even harder because. Sometimes road rat requires a lot of time and focus. And if you don't set boundaries and then set an agenda and timetable, you can blur the lines very easily and you can drop the ball professionally and then focus on road rat. You can drop the ball in road rat and then just keep focusing on your professional career. So it's all about setting your agenda, setting a timetable, sticking to it, and then ma managing your passion versus your profession. Because realistically, you need your profession to grow your passion. Hi, Mario. We have one here from Club Secretary Shanti. She asks, what advice will you give to someone thinking about joining the district team? Do it. Like, like you said, just do it. The district team gives you an international experience. I mean, I've, so I've sat on a district team for about three years. Kareem is on a district team, he can tell you. Sahir has been on it, Mel is on it. You gain a great perspective. You touch different countries and territories. You get inspiration. You help to guide and mold people as well. It's a great opportunity to learn more about Rotaract, to Rotary, and the world over and have an even larger service impact. I think any one of the cranberries, because we are a benchmark club, at the RR, I've used a lot of what we do internally to take to the district level so that we can then streamline processes and procedures and improve our service level. So any of the cranberries in here who are dedicated and true road actors, step up with the district team and you will not regret it. Well, I would say first though, we have to feed ourselves before we feed others. And this is just my plug to say, we still have two vacancies for the 2022 to 2023 board for secretary and international service director. So feed ourselves before jumping onto the district. <laughs> Why is plug? Shout out to Kareem for the plug. Um, I actually just wanted to say that having been on the district team last year, it was really very interesting. And you, you get to, as Mario said, enhance your reach, especially in the district, getting to know members of different clubs in different countries. Um, it was certainly an enriching and enlightening um, experience for me, but um, home drums beat first, cranberry forever, um, and however you can serve really and truly is well done. 
he finished telling me finish you talking. No, I'm finished. All right, I see Janelle has another question. Yes, please. <clears throat> um, you briefly mentioned about transitioning from Black to Rotary. Um, maybe you are trying to answer the question, what are the fees involved and how do I do it No, in Rotary? Do I have to get a sponsor, a letter of recommendation? What, what's the true process? Um, so as I said, the process varies according to each Rotary actor, each Rotary club and their membership committee. Um, I generally believe the rotary fees start at, I think, about $450 per annum, but you pay that per quarter. And it's and this here in Barbados. Every country, territory, region, they have different fees, and that's set by their clubs. Because there's even a club in Texas, their annual fees are $600 US. So if you can talk more about getting the recommendation letter or the sponsor, um, well, yeah. Yeah, hi, um, for Rotary Club of Barbados, our fees are semi-annually. Um, there are 250 US for the entire year, but you pay that um, semi-annually. Um, January and July, I think it is. Yeah, January and July. Um, flexible, so if you wanted to pay those things in installment, that's something that we would facilitate. Um, in terms of <clears throat> attending the road, joining the Rotary Club of Barbados, we kind of do it like a, uh, it's like a dating game, kind of, in the sense that, you know, you come to the club, you see us in action, you, part, you do a few service projects, you know, you get involved to see if this is what you really like, we get to know you, we get to know us. And then you would your the sponsor would write a formal letter to the membership committee. They will review it and then it will roll up to the board. And then that's pretty much your membership. Um, obviously, as a Rotaracta, you know, the formality will still be there, but it would be a much easier transition. Um, we meet on Thursdays at Hilton, we may go back face to face shortly. Um, but currently, we meet on Thursdays at lunchtime on Zoom. Um, we do a lot of Varian projects. Um, going forward, we're going to have to do a lot of small group projects given the COVID um, pandemic. But definitely, in terms of younger Rotaractors graduating to Rotary, that's something that we look forward to having. Um, there's a group of, Mario will tell you, there's a group of us that don't consider ourselves old. But I guess in your context, we are. But we think we're cool. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's, we're very open. And we, we love young people in Rotary Club of Barbados. It gives us a lot of energy. Um, I think Kareem and Mario and Danielle, um, they work with us, Janelle. They, they know what we like. We like to have. We like to have our Rotaractors involved. We like that play. We like the energy that you bring. So I would, you know, I would be really happy if we had graduates um, and when you're ready. And you do it when you're ready, you know? And you do it when you're ready. So that's pretty much. Absolutely. Thank you very much for that, P.E. Tracy. Um, one thing I did forget to mention too, something that is now creeping up on the scope. Um, we've seen a lot of satellite rotary clubs pop up, and that's a new type of rotary club that is becoming very popular as well. What happens is sometimes you get some rotarians from another club or rotaractors who may not feel they're ready to go fully into rotary. They don't have the finances or the time to dedicate to the true rotary, the true rotary club, and they create a spin-off or satellite of a rotary club. And they stay in there. Um, I call it an incubator, so forgive me. They incubate, they grow some more, and when they are ready, they step into an established Rotary Club, and, they, and they're still a full-fledged Rotarian as a, as a member of a satellite Rotary Club. So that's one thing to note as well. So the Rotary program is ever evolving, and it's looking to change, and always keep us moving up the ladder in that service spirit. I always like to bring up the 
hold the rotary wheel or the cog that affects me, and I look at it, you look at early act, you look at interact, you look at rotary act, you look at rotary, we keep moving and we keep service going. Any more questions? Okay, there seems to be no more questions. So I wanna thank you all for listening and being active in our Q&A sessions. I hope the information shared was beneficial. Please welcome Director Siobhan, who will now give the vote of thanks. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the Professional Development Committee of the Rotaract Club of Barbados, I would like to thank PE Trace tonight, Lloyd, for identifying all the tools necessary to become an effective leader. I hope you guys had out your pens, pencils, phones, whatever it was, because she was forever dropping nuggets. So if you guys miss them, I am so sorry, but my pen, my notepad here is full. Additionally, I'd like to thank DRR Mario for educating us on what being a good road to Raptor means, how we can utilize the resources provided to develop ourselves professionally and personally, and how we can also serve our communities and the public at large. Thank you to all Rotarians, Rotaractors, prospective members, and you, the general public, for taking time out of your schedules to be here with us. And lastly, thank you to all our sponsors, Candles for the Culture, Victorious Care Designs, Just Pour Cocktails, and Dodi for the gifts that you provided. I will now hand back over to Club Se Committee Secretary Janelle. Thanks, Siobhan. I'm gonna ask PM Deandra to please present the token gifts. Thank you, Janelle. I am pleased to announce a token gift for our facilitators. PE Tracy, you will receive a gift card from Victoric Designs. Victoric Designs is a handmade jewelry business founded in Barbados. All products are also made in Barbados and are designed to represent the style and the personality of the Caribbean woman. Each piece is made with high quality metals to last a long time. DRR Mario, you will receive an eight ounce soy candle from Candles for the Culture 246. Candles for the Culture 246 is a brainchild of Jalisa Kinch, a fellow Rotoractor from Rotorat West. Products range from candles, linen and room sprays, and body oils, all specially crafted by the owner with you in mind. PE Tracy and DRR Mario, you both will receive gift certificates from Dodi Barbados. Dodi was established in 2018 by Tadia Sivi, who has over 20 years culinary experience. Dodi is a premier Barbadian contemporary culinary service provided exciting dining experiences with their dining series in the city and pop-ups. Be sure to check out Cowboy Meats for your smoked meats, fish, and cheeses. We also have special prizes for two of our guests. The first person to register and the most participation throughout today, this evening's discussion. You both will receive gift certificates from Just For Cocktails, a locally owned business offering premixed cocktail blends. This evening's winners are Dario Braffitt, first to register, and Jahir Jackson, most participation. Oh my gosh, I've never won anything before. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Jahir is not here, so nothing for oh, him. Sis. <laughs> you have no Thank, you. Thank you so much for those gifts. Thank you. Okay, Thank well you, done to the prize winners. President Scott, please feel free to proceed with the club announcements. Sorry about that. Yes, good night, everyone. All right, so this weekend we are hosting our Better Health, Better Wealth um, initiative, um, our free health fair for school age children um, is slated to be here at the Lufthamore Primary School from 9 to 2. Um, those who have children, um, please register. Um, we are offering 
um, general health checks, eye checks, um, some counseling and other information sessions. Um, we are currently in discussions with the COVID units. Um, they, it may not come off that same day, but we may have an opportunity later on to host a pop-up site. So as it relates to the COVID vaccines, um, just stay tuned for more information on that. And also speaking about better health, better wealth, um, tomorrow um, morning at 9.30 p.m. a.m., let me say p.m., 9.30 a.m., um, um, tune in to SLAM. Um, one of our very own will be on air um, discussing, um, promoting this event. So just stay tuned for more information. Um, a flyer is to come out shortly. So just stay tuned for that. Also Saturday, we have our virtual movie night. Um, Science is the weekend for Valentine's. Um, the club service committee thought wrong comms were, would be the best and ideal thing. So they got think like a man and nobody's fool. And yeah, so just come out and prepare to be <laughs> laughing and having stitches in your stomach, especially with Tiffany Haddish. But also warning Tiffany Haddish involved. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, um, Rotary District Conference. Um, this is Rotary related, um, Rotary and not the Rotary Conference, but their, their, their early bird ends on the 14th of February and it's just 395 US for us Barbadians. So those who wish to attend the Rotary Conference and have a different view on a conference experience, um, Rotary conferences from April 7th to 9th. Um, this would include pets and everything included. As the RR Mario would have highlighted, we have our photo booth. As you can see, uh, we have fully butt up. So for all members that um, just you will get an email for the time, or you should have remember, but for those who can't remember, um, emails will be sent out um, detailing time and fees and all of that. Additionally, if you wish to have more than one photo, um, that would be an additional $50 for each photo you wish to take. Um, and we have partnered with Executive Media. So just um, come up. <laughs> and support. All right, Roach returns 117 years. So um, February 23rd, there is a um, district-wide uh, birthday quote-unquote party. So those persons who are interested, um, feel free to register. Um, those who are on Club Runner should have received an email related to this. Um, but information will be posted for those who haven't registered, who haven't signed up on Club Runners yet. All right, breaking bread assists. Um, not sure if it's still two persons needed, but um, for those President who- Scott, just to interject, we have our two volunteers. Thank you. Okay, so there you have it. Um, the slots have been filled. So those two persons will be the lucky ones to, um, as the R.R. Mario said, to um, experience some emotion or execute or put into practice some emotional um, intelligence while doing community service. <laughs> and um, our big shebang this month is our cocktail celebration. Uh, I am pleased to note, to, well, to say, that um, we have a location confirmed. Um, the, that confirmation came moments, just moments before the meeting started. So the anniversary cocktail will be at Mount Gay um, Visitor Center. So more information to come out. We have some um, live performances as well. Um, we will have Rotarian Mikey, we have Faith Calendar, and we have 
two of our very own road raptors uh, slated to perform. So we also have a dance session with some students from, I want to say UE, but yeah. So just look out for more information to come. Um, that information should be posted tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. And lastly, <clears throat> so our Road Rat District, sorry, um, sent out a call for nominations or for persons to nominate themselves to be um, the next, the future DRR for the year 24 to 25, if I'm not mistaken. Um, one person came up and that is lead assistant Rotorat representative, um, who is our ADRR as well, um, Mr. Rolinzo Her from Suriname. And so um, the usual, I guess, Q&A would occur, but the RR Mario can uh, shed light on that. But with only one nomination, um, and having worked alongside um, Mr. Her on the district team, um, I believe he is an ideal candidate to take off take on this role. Right. President Scott, they actually won't make the candidate session this year, being that we only have one extremely qualified candidate. So we're just gonna let the clubs vote on it. Okay, no problem. Thank you. And that's it for notices. So next. Thank is... you, Scott. Mm. Could you do the honor of taking our group photo? Sure. sure. Turn on your cameras, people. Let me see those faces. Well, if you can, and you're decent. Come in, come in, come in. Ah. All right, everyone's ready. Thumbs up, yes. Scott, on your account, please. Sure. All right, one, two, three. Wait, hold on, hold on. I'll let people start messaging the chat. I wanna pop in it. All right, hold a sec, hold a sec. Clear those. So, all right, one, two, three, smile. Because there are two, so just give me a sec. See, so, yep, that one is good. So, the second one. One, two, three, smile. All right, let me see. All right, that, they're all good. Perfect. Thanks again for everyone who came out. Hope everybody enjoyed the session. You can take up your mics if you want to talk. That's why I asked a question about fines today. 